In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. Today's parable is the third parable in Matthew 25. And all of these uh, three parables deal with our Lord's second coming, about his going away and his coming again, the end of the age. And in this parable, he gives talents. And it says, each according, he gives these talents, each according to their ability. Five to one, two to another, and one to the one with lesser ability. And these are, uh, the story is, is that they were meant to multiply these. That these talents that they were given were ultimately something that they were supposed to be diligent about, faithful to. And that in their faithfulness and diligence, they would multiply them and, and bring forth more fruit so that when the Lord returned, he would be rejoice in them. And of course, you just heard the gospel, so you know how it goes. Now, these talents we're meant to understand are the graces that God has given us. There's natural talent that each one of us is born with, whether by genetics or how we're raising. But God also places a certain grace upon us, a certain gift of the Holy Spirit that enables those talents to be more than what they are, to be seeds that are planted that are meant to multiply the kingdom of heaven and bring people closer to God. And the point of the parable is to tell people that ultimately you have what God has given you. We live in that time where Jesus has quote unquote gone away, the time where he seems distant, that time in between his first coming and the second coming when he will come to judge the living and the dead. And as it says in this account, when he will reckon, well, when he will essentially straighten out the books and reckon with us what we have done with what he's given us. Now, the men who, the, the people who had the talents and multiplied them were overjoyed to see what they had produced as he was away. The one man who had not, who had dug a hole and buried his talent, he says, Jesus says that he is a wicked and evil servant. What is the cause of him burying his talent? Well, he says it's because that he saw the, the master as a hard person, someone who sowed and reaped where he had not reaped or sown, who essentially demanded more than what he had given. And this is what we are to understand in our own spiritual lives, that oftentimes we are resentful about the gifts that God has given us, and we don't mind using them to worldly ends. I mean, we don't mind getting rich using the gifts that God has given us. But oftentimes, the idea of multiplying these talents in a godly way, by serving the church, by serving Christ, by dedicating ourselves a life of, of taking and expanding um, what he has given us and building upon it within the kingdom of heaven, within the body of Christ. We often think one thing, that it is, I didn't ask for this. Not only did I not ask for this, I don't want this. Now again, we don't mind making money, but when it comes to the things of God, oftentimes we feel like God is a hard person. We feel like he's asked us to do things that we really don't want to do, that we've never wanted to do. And this is one of the meanings of, of today's parable with the person who buried his talent. The second thing that, that is mentioned for him burying his talent was that he had fear. Now you would think that he had fear of, of God and that ultimately he would multiply everything because fear is sometimes a motivator. But instead, this fear caused him to bury it. It's puzzling in a sense. But oftentimes, whether it's our fear of God or whether it's our fear of our own inadequacy, 
We take the God-given talents we've been given and we bury them. And by burying them, we mean don't, we don't use them. We don't do anything with them. We don't cultivate them. And I've heard this, of course, in many Orthodox parishes and, and everywhere else, which is, well, I'm not worthy. Even Moses, as he stood before the burning bush, did not feel worthy. No, none of us are worthy. And yet, the gifts that God has given us were meant to offer back to the community, to work diligently, to be faithful. Many have felt that they're not worthy towards God. But the goal of the gospel is never to bury anything. It's never to hide anything. It's always to illuminate, to activate, to bring to fruition, to multiply. The gospel is meant to activate our souls and activate our lives in a such way that we would bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That we would operate in the gifts that we've been given, whether it is to be an apostle, a teacher, a preacher, Someone who vacuums, someone who listens, someone who is with the children, someone who, by living their life diligently and faithfully, ultimately manifests the grace of Christ to the people that are around them. That's what it means to multiply the talents. Now, there's a principle presented in today's gospel, and that is those who have... And those who multiply what they have, they were able to keep it. And you hear that the master does not begrudge the one who had two talents for not making five more. Again, within his own capacity, within his own ability, he only has to produce and double that which he was given. To the one who buried his talent, the one who didn't use it, ultimately it's taken away. And it's given to the one who had 10 talents. That is to say, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Now, in my own mind, as I encountered this week's gospel and was thinking about it, the first thing that I thought, which is oftentimes the thing I'm supposed to preach on, was in the back of our minds, this parable is often thought of as some sort of motivator to get you to serve the church, to get you to do the work that you should be doing, to help build the community, to evangelize. It's certainly okay to think about it that way. But when we talk about it that way, we talk about it as it's some sort of duty that's been put on to you. God needs your work. He wants you to work. There's something you're supposed to be doing and put your hand to the plow. Be more diligent. Be more faithful. But I want to tell you, God doesn't need your work. God doesn't need you to do anything. If you are working, if you are a slave to the master, then everything that you're called to do Every talent that you step into and multiply has more to do with you than it does the master. In other words, he gives us these gifts for our salvation, for our growth, for our fulfillment, for our transformation. God isn't the evil taskmaster who just needs us to do things, who's standing on the sideline begging us to just do our part because he's weak and he can't accomplish it himself. No, that's not the case. The case is, is that you won't be fulfilled. You won't walk in your ministry. You won't be transformation, transformed. You won't be dedicated. You won't reap the benefits of being dedicated to the master unless you cultivate what he's given you. And ultimately, at the end, it says, for the two who are diligent, it says, enter into the joy of your Lord. Enter into the joy. That ultimately, this is about joy, our joy and our gladness at serving Christ. So I say all that for us to back away from this duty-boundness and this kind of managerial sort of spirit 
and to recognize that everything we do for Christ is not meant to be, is meant to be motivated out of our love for him. And out of our love and our knowledge that what he gives us is good for us. And that the goodness that he desires for us has to be cultivated within us in order to bear its fruit. That really changes the perspective because if it focuses on the master and his needs, it can easily become dismissed and a taskmaster uh, demanding all these things. But ultimately, in our gospel, in the kingdom of heaven, this is about us. You know, and the gifts that have been given with Christ coming and laying down his life, dying and rising. The gifts of the Spirit, the amazing gifts of the Spirit that have been poured out on each and every one of us. The amazing natural talents that each one of you have. Some would say that we as Christians could conquer the world with this message. We could become so much more than we are. But it requires diligence and faithfulness. And that is the ultimate meaning of today's parable. May our Lord intercede for us. May he give us the grace of redemption that helps us to be diligent and faithful with all that he has given us so that we can enter into his joy. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. He is in our <clears throat>